Hey everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. I'm Zelda Master and in this episode, we're going to be taking on the Color Dungeon. So to enter the Color Dungeon, you're going to need magic powder. You don't actually need it to enter it, but you're going to need it within this dungeon. So make sure you have some on you. I luckily have 40 because I never actually use it. So that's good. But uh, yeah, you're going to have these two uh, skeletons in robes that are going to block the path. And if you talk to them... They're gonna tell you that their colors are never the same. I am red, he is blue. If he is red, I am blue. What color is my clothes? Okay, so, yeah, this is kind of like denying you if you're playing on a colorless Game Boy, which is the original Game Boy, then you wouldn't be able to tell which one's red or which one's blue. And this guy's blue, so you gotta answer the question. Don't tell anyone. Alright, sweet, and you have powder. If not, you must go back. He's warning you that you need powder for this, so... That's cool, but let's go ahead and answer this question, and he is going to be red, of course. We can obviously see it, unless your monitor is colorless, and maybe this video will be a little hard to actually watch, but yeah, the Color Dungeon is a uh, DX exclusive, and uh, you have to play it on the Game Boy Color, unless you're playing like on Virtual Console or something, either way you're going to be getting color, but yeah, I tried playing this on a normal Game Boy, it did not work, it was really difficult. Now. Memorizing which, uh, you know, one of those skeletons blocking the path with like which color robe they're wearing is easy to remember. It's not like something you need to solve, but these questions here are what's difficult. Now, I don't mean questions, I mean these puzzles. <laughs> so, as you can tell, hitting a switch will uh, cause the colors to change, and essentially what you have to do is you have to have them all turn to blue. The owl statue will tell you that you need to do that, but we need the owl beak to understand it. So I'm just going to ignore that and solve it myself. And just by doing that, we are set. Um, by hitting one, it will trigger the two near it to also switch. And it goes from red to blue. So that's what makes it really difficult to play it on something colorless, because you won't be able to tell uh, unless you also have these puzzles memorized like how many times you have to hit which one yada 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 but I mean if you do mess it up then you're gonna have to completely leave this area for it to reset so yeah I highly suggest just playing this on a color device <laughs> so yeah um, because pretty much the only thing that doesn't display color would be a original Game Boy but yeah, okay come on I didn't mean to actually do that let's go ahead and hit these guys and what we need to do and you can knock them into the hole, or you can actually just pick them up and uh, toss them in like this. Really depends on how you want to do it. Of course, I suggest picking them up because you can be more accurate with it. Once you throw these guys in, you're going to get yourself the stone beak. Now we can actually listen to what the owl has to say, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, let's see, now I want to go ahead and head up here. This dungeon is actually like really, really easy. I uh, never actually had trouble with it. Um, there we go. Okay, we solved this one, but let's go ahead and read it. So, here is your clue. Make all the red blue. And that's it. The thing is, I don't think they were all red. I think one was yellow or something. Either way, we solved this one, and we'll be able to continue on. Uh, each one you see, you're going to want to make blue, so you're not going to have to talk to the owl statue, because he just wants to make that rhyme. But here's the clue. Make all the red blue. Yeah. And then here you got these enemies that uh, come out of these weird tiles that have color and they're going to try to attack you. They're pretty easy. And this is why we need the magic powder. So, boo, I am no weakling. Your pitiful sword is no match for me. It is, as long as you have the powder. So, go ahead and spray some powder on this giant guy. And when you do, he will freeze like this. Literally, the game will freeze for like a frame or so and then you'll be able to attack him like that. You're able to do like, I think, two hits uh, each time you you do this, so you want to be quick with it. Make sure he doesn't hit you. Okay. And he hurts. He really hurts. So let's go ahead and hit him once. Oh, I couldn't actually. All right. There we go. We avoided him. I'm able to hit him once, and he's dead. All right. That took quite a bit, but I was able to do it, and he should hopefully, yes, drop a fairy. Uh, that's one issue, you know, enemies do hurt. We could change that completely at the end of this dungeon and be a lot tankier, but uh, we'll see which color I will be picking because this whole thing is for a really powerful buff that they give you that makes the game a whole lot easier. But here we got the Nightmare's Key. Now we can enter the boss room once we actually make it to the boss room, so keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. And these tiles here switch colors. 
Uh, green is super safe, and then it goes yellow, and once it goes red, it's gonna break. So, yeah. And it goes in that order, but you gotta avoid these guys. They just pop out. They're really annoying. But here, come here. Alright, there we go. Uh, I don't think there's anything else important in this room, so we're just gonna continue on. And, yeah. This is supposed to be somewhat like a dungeon, but it feels a whole lot shorter and a whole lot easier. Like, if anything, this is not going to take me that long. We're, like, more than halfway done with this dungeon. Uh, so, yeah. But, I want to do it in its own episode because this is kind of exclusive. If you're playing the original version of the game, you don't really need to follow along this episode because you can't. So, yeah. Maybe he's a buffoon like me and we go home. Whatever. Okay, cool stuff, man. This guy. Really easy. Um, it, but he's annoying and the reason for that is because when he jumps in the air he'll stun you I believe you can use rocks cape to avoid that attack, but for some reason I can never get it I think you have to be frame perfect or maybe not. Maybe you just have to fall down after that. So let's see Yeah, it's like I can't avoid that attack when he falls on the ground link has to like sit for a brief second Maybe you can jump like right before he stomps and if you do it like perfectly You'll avoid that, but I don't know honestly, so I'm just gonna try to hit him as much as I possibly can and uh, Come on. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to avoid it to begin with so we're just gonna go ahead and ignore that until we can kill him And there we go. He has been defeated and he can advance now. Hopefully he drops a fairy He did but the fairy needs to come to us. This is one issue about the game tend to do that the fairies just disappear on us sweet okay awesome that's exactly what I wanted guys <laughs> that guy just killed himself because he had no wings and that one killed himself alright sweet that's not what we need to do we need to kill these guys we need to actually head over here and pick up this bottle there we go alright so when you actually step on these uh, platforms you do bounce but I believe if you actually hold a pot, you're not going to bounce. It will keep you steady on it, which is a lot easier to maneuver around. But I like jumping overall. Plus, especially if there are platforms missing, if you broke some, you're going to need to bounce. But here we got a piece of power. This here is something we're going to have permanently if we pick the power power up, which we'll get at the end of the dungeon. And if we pick the, um, the defense power up, it's like we're going to have a guardian acorn. So I think that's really cool how these little buffs we get within the game and oh that was perfect we'll be able to keep for good all right okay no 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 this is not looking good for me okay uh i have this out so we're good pick it up and throw it all right ah that was really close that was way too close for comfort <laughs> all right we're gonna throw this guy in and then we're gonna grab this and we're gonna throw him. Please just throw him in. Pick him up. And toss. Sweet. We did it. I don't wanna die here. <laughs> I really don't. Let's see if we can find, like, maybe some hearts. Please. This game is not really that generous with hearts. And that's why it's really common to die. Like, uh, a lot of people have been telling me, oh, there's this special ending. And I'm 100% aware, aware of it, and I've done it before where you get this secret ending in the game. It's not really that special though, but you can get it if you um, if you beat the game without dying once. But this is a game where you're kind of expected to die a couple times. Like game overs is something you're gonna see. Usually in pretty much every other Zelda game, or at least in the newer Zelda games, you're never gonna get a game over. But these Zelda games, like the classical ones, it's a common thing, so yeah. Anyways, uh, what I want to do is let's hopefully we can solve this puzzle easily because I would like to do that. Uh, I think this is it. And then, crap, that was not how I wanted to do it. Um, let's see, if I hit this guy, and then I hit this guy, and then I hit this. Wait, okay, I think I got it. And then I just hit this. That no. Essentially, we want to have all of these turn into blue ones, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. All I need to do is like position it to where I'll be able to get it in one go. Okay, this is actually this might be what I want. So if I hit this, no. Yeah, if I hit this, do this, hit this back, hit it like that. No, I just reverted it. Maybe now. Oh, wait. 
No, oh, I felt like I had it. I'm pretty sure this is really easy to solve, but sometimes you can be really dumb. Kind of like I am. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And then that. And then this. And then that. <laughs> what the frick? I can't solve this at all. I don't know why. This is actually used to be pretty. Oh, okay. There we go. Finally. I did it. All right, after a lot of meddling with this freaking contraption, I was able to turn them all into blue. Imagine doing this colorless. You can't even see what you're doing, but yeah. This is normally a pretty easy puzzle to solve, but as you can tell, it wasn't really that easy for me. Okay, so, uh, be careful. I believe those zoles would have literally killed me if they touched me once, so I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna kill them, and then we're right in front of the boss, aren't we? So, essentially, I should be good if I can get one thing, and that, my friends, is, yes, a fairy. Okay, sweet. You, normally, they give you fairies right in front of the boss, so I was good in that regard, but let's go ahead and hit this, walk all the way to the other side, and enter this room where we're going to fight the boss. So, blue is safe, yellow is caution, red is danger. Okay, um, interesting. Now, that set of dialogue is something you're gonna be hearing really long. Okay, start over, whatever. So, what you wanna do essentially, oh my god. You don't want him to make it to that point where he's gonna repeat what he just said because he's gonna sit and literally repeat it. So, you're supposed to constantly hit him until he, um, until he starts to turn red, and once he turns yellow, he's gonna tell you ca caution, danger, whatever. You just keep hitting him. So you take him all the way from blue to red uh, while he turns, you know, yellow and all of that. And once you do all of that nonsense, he will finally die and explode. It was actually really freaking easy. I was, just, I just need to corner him so I can spam my attacks nonstop. But here it is, guys. So. In the end of the last episode, I asked you guys which color do you want me to pick, red or blue? I honestly don't really care about the stat buff, I just care on how Link looks, um, cause, yeah, it doesn't really bother me what I get. I'm happy with how strong Link is now, so welcome Link, I admire you for coming this far, I will give you the power of color. If you want offense, choose red. If you want defense, choose blue. So, yeah, like I said, essentially we're gonna be getting a Guardian Acorn or a, uh, power gem or whatever it's called for good we get to keep it on us but we only get to pick one and you don't have to hear that annoying music so yeah um and as you guys suggested well a lot of you guys suggested both colors but the majority went with red so we are choosing red and a lot of you guys really wanted me just to get additional power i guess no one wants me to become tankier maybe you guys like the game overs i get but yeah you've got red clothes your body is full of energy Oh, there we go. We are now red. Link looks amazing red because his hair turns, and you're gonna see what I mean. I will take you out now. His hair turns black. All right, he just looks so much different. He looks awesome. Like at least a sprite, of course. It's not actually going to be black. This is just how they uh, make him look. It look, yeah, it's pretty much black. So yeah, uh, I don't know. To me, he looks freaking awesome. I like it. It's freaking red, Link. Uh, I could have chose blue to get the defense, and you can actually. Uh, do it again and change. I'm pretty sure you can change back and forth. If you're not happy with red, you can easily go to blue. But I think I'm going to stick with this for the rest of the game. Um, I believe if I did choose blue, I could have got a power up for my sword later on. And would have had both. Pretty much the best of both worlds. But I'm picking power. And I'll get even stronger later on within the game. So I'm happy with that. I'd much rather have that than anything, but that does do it for the color dungeon. Now we can actually make our way to the next in-game dungeon, or not necessarily in-game, but story dungeon, I guess, uh, that is up ahead. Yeah, we are a lot stronger right now. I love the way Link looks right now. The freaking red tunic is epic, but yeah. Um, there is one thing I want to note, because someone did mention it in the end of the last episode, or not in the end of the last, in the last episode, and that was... Uh, that if I came here with Marin, and I'll have the footage play right now, that uh, Marin would have taken a picture with Taryn, her father, and uh, you can view it. Now, I went ahead, dug up an old file, replayed through the what I did in the last episode, 
and took that picture as well. So now I have all of the pictures taken with Marin and we can actually view them. Now I'll go ahead and show them off now. But yeah, when you have Marin following you, you want to go ahead and do that because it's, you know, a photo you could take with her. And that's when I forgot. I took the other two though. So I just replayed everything I did before. Uh, and you want to take it over there. So let's go ahead and actually view all of the photos I've taken so far. I don't think I skipped any yet. Uh, if I did, that would suck because I believe some photos you can't actually retake again. It's like at a certain point in the game. So luckily someone did mention in the comments that I forgot to take that photo because it completely slipped my mind. And if I didn't remember, I would have had to like play through the whole game again. Luckily I did have an old save file from the from before recording the previous episode so I was able to play off screen what I did in the last episode which was perfect for me but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and just end off at the photograph place the camera hut and we'll go ahead and view all of the photos we've taken so far the travel the link you want to look at your album yes we do alright so there we go pretty much one to six is complete and we can easily view them by doing this. So we have this one. I just want to go ahead and see the Terran ones, which I believe this one was in the last episode we took together. Also, this is the one that I said I was going to show you guys where uh, we fall in the well and then Terran crushes Link. And Link is doing a pretty hilarious face. I don't want to print it though because I can't. And here's the photo with Terran. It's actually really... Uh, like, not as detailed as the other ones. Oh, I mean, the windmill itself, or the freaking bird statue thing, is detailed, but everything else isn't. Like the sprites of Link, Terran, and Marin. And then the other two photos were this one, Yulrira, and Link with Bow Wow. But we got another six photos we can take. That will be another time, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching this episode. I'm going to go ahead and end off here. And in the next episode, we'll continue on with our adventure. So I'll see you all then. Bye.